Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about properties of logarithms. To start off, we're going to consider any base b that is a positive number, not equal to 1, and any real numbers x and y. Now we're going to list all the properties that we'll be using in this video below in a chart below, and each property will be given a name. The first property is called the product rule. It says that log base b of x times y is equal to log base b of x plus log base b of y. So basically, a product within a log will split into the sum of two logs of the same base, where each log has exactly one of the components in the original product. The next property is called the quotient rule. If I have a quotient within a log, it splits into the difference of one log with the other. Both have the same base, and each will have the component of the original quotient. Notice how the numerator is first and the denominator comes second, where on the right hand side the denominator is no longer part of a fraction. So with the quotient rule, the order of the right hand side definitely matters. Next we have the power rule. It says log base b of x to the y equals to y times log base b of x. Basically powers get moved down to the front. The next rule is called the change of base rule. It says log base b of x is equal to the natural log of x divided by the natural log of that original base. And last we have inverse relations. Log base b of b to the x is just equal to x, and b raised to log base b of x is just equal to x as well. Loosely speaking, with a bit of abuse of terminology, you can think of these like cancellation properties. In accordance with problem phraseologies, Everything on the left-hand side can be considered as a compressed or simplified version, and everything on the right-hand side can be expressed as an expanded version or some difference in multiplication of logs. Let's jump into some examples. Let's expand the following quantities. Start with log base 2 of quantity x plus 4 cubed times x squared. Since I have a product in the inside, I can use the product rule, and this will simplify to log base 2 of x plus 4 cubed plus log base 2 of x squared. Since I have powers present, I can use the power rule and bring those powers out front to give me 3 times log base 2 of x plus 4 plus 2 times log base 2 of x. And that's all the simplification that we can do, so we're done. In this next problem, we'll actually compress log base 5 of x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus log base 5 of x plus 1. The first thing I'll do with the left quantity is simplify the inside by factoring the quadratic. So I get log base 5 of x plus 1 squared minus log base 5 of x plus 1. Then I'll use the quotient rule to divide the two out, and then after I simplify the inside, I simply get a final answer of log base 5 of x plus 1, and we're done. Let's look at some more examples. I'll write log base 5 of 2 in terms of natural log. This just invokes the change of base formula, so I get the answer of ln of 2 over ln of 5, and we're done. For our next example, I'll simplify log base 3 of the quantity 1 over 27 squared. First I'll use the power rule, and I'll bring the power 2 out front to give me 2 times log base 3 of 1 over 27. Then I'll use the quotient rule to expand to get 2 times the quantity log base 3 of 1 minus log base 3 of 27. I recall that log base 3 of 1 is actually equal to the number 0, so this simplifies to 2 times 0 minus log base 3 of 27, which simplifies again to negative 2 times log base 3 of 27. Now off to the side, I can actually compute log base 3 of 27. Since log base 3 of 27 can be set equal to x, this means that 3 to the x equals 27. And then one can deduce that x should equal 3 because 3 cubed is equal to 27. Therefore, log base 3 of 27 is equal to 3, which means that our final answer simplifies again to negative 6, and we're done. For this next example, we'll expand the following. Expand log base 4 of the fourth root of quantity x cubed times x squared plus 3. First, I realize that this fourth root is actually raising this quantity to the power of 1 fourth, which will allow me to use the power rule by dropping the 1 fourth down in front of the log to get 1 fourth times log base 4 of quantity x cubed times quantity x squared plus 3. Using the product rule, this expands to 1 fourth times the quantity log base 4 of x cubed plus log base 4 of x squared plus 3. Zooming in on log base 4 of x cubed, I can use a power rule within the set of parentheses to get 1 fourth times the quantity 3 times log base 4 of x 
plus log base 4 of x squared plus 3 because the right quantity did not change. Now all I have to do is distribute the 1 fourth to get a final answer of 3 fourths log base 4 of x plus 1 fourth log base 4 of x squared plus 3 and we're done. In this next example, we'll simplify the following. 1 half times log base 5 of 4 plus 3 times log base 5 of 1 half plus log base 5 of 6 25. For the sake of space, I'm going to simplify 1 half times log base 5 of 4 and 3 times log base 5 of 1 half separately down below and then insert those into the actual simplification. So looking at 1 half times log base 5 of 4, I see that putting the power back inside gives me log base 5 of 4 to the 1 half which simplifies down to log base 5 of 2, and this is ultimately easier to work with. And this is a good example of showing that these rules work backwards. So instead of taking a power outside, we can take a power and push it inside. We'll do the same thing with 3 times log base 5 of 1 half. We'll bring that power of 3 inside, which will simplify this quantity to log base 5 of 1 eighth, because 1 half cubed is equal to 1 eighth. Now substituting in these simplifications, I get back with our original equation and simplify it to log base 5 of 2 plus log base 5 of 1 8 plus log base 5 of 6 25. Looking at the first two terms, I can use the product rule because it's a plus. Therefore, log base 5 of 2 plus log base 5 of 1 8 becomes log base 5 of 1 fourth, and this is because 2 times 1 8 is equal to 1 fourth. Now I'll use the product rule again to bring these two terms together to get log base 5 as 625 divided by 4. And unless you want a decimal number within, there is no more simplification that needs to be done, so this is actually an acceptable answer. If you really want the true number, you can put this into a calculator, but at the end of the day, this is acceptable. For our next example, let f of x equal to 2 to the x plus 1 plus 5, and let g of x equal to log base 2 of x squared. What we're going to do is compute the composition of f composed by g of x, which by definition is f of g of x. And when I make these substitutions, I get 2 raised to the power log base 2 of x squared, quantity plus 1, all plus 5. So recall with exponents that a raised to the power x plus y expands into a to the x times a to the y. Here I have 2 raised to a sum, so that sum will split into 2 raised to log base 2 of x squared times 2 to the 1, all plus 5. My inverse rule applies, and this simplifies me down to 2 times x squared plus 5, and we're done. I can still evaluate compositions at numbers, so f composed with g of 1 simplifies down to 7, and we're done.